chapter 27. I'll be there in just a minute. It was an amazing week for me and Sister Lori to be out of town just to uh, go up to Colorado. Got caught in a snowstorm. You don't get that here in Texas much. Um, be in the mountains with the grandkids and watch them grow. You know, I just I know many of you. I watch your social media and I see what you, you know, things you're doing. Uh, appreciate you commenting on us. We just had a great time, and it's good to be home. Matthew chapter 27. Amen. Are you comfortable? We started out this morning dealing with communion, believing for a catalyst that would cause a reaction. This was the catalyst that started a revolution. Amen. It's, I'm sweating in here just a little bit. If you find an air conditioner in the back, just get a little air stirring. Amen. And those they, folk already got coats in here. I'm asking somebody to move toward them receivers back. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate it. I didn't know if that was me or you. But I'm sw- Is it warm to y'all? Thank you, Jesus. I thought, man, we have something wrong, preacher. It's going to be, what, 25 degrees in here tomorrow? 30, going to drop, going to get cold. Oh, thank you, Lord. It was 19 degrees when I left yesterday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 27, verse 27. Then the governors, and by the way, those watching online, this, this online is so important. I get messages all the time from people saying, thank you, Pastor, for this online. And I've got people that are moving around the country now, and they watch for us. So I thank you for tuning in. Matthew 27, verse 27. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into, into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him. They put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns. They set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hell, king of the Jews, they said. Then they spit on him. They took the staff and they struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. And they led him away to crucify him. I don't think we hear this enough. We wait till Easter to hear it. But when I'm listening, it, this is, is so uh, concentrated. Amen. They, they took him, all the soldiers around him. They stripped him. They put a scarlet robe. They twisted together a crown of thorns, set it on his head, a staff in his right hand. They knelt in front of him. They mocked him. Hell, king of the Jews. And understanding this, that Jesus could have called angels in. This is the man that walked on water. This is the man that healed the sick. This is the man that did so many good for the people. They sped on him. They, they took a staff. They struck him on the head where the crown of thorns was and pierced it into his brow. They mocked him. Amen. And but believe it or not, before this, they'd already beat him on the back with a whip. And then they put the robe on his back. And now the robe is congealed into the blood. And then they pull the robe back off, which reopens the wounds again. And then they led him away to be crucified. When I think of the reaction that this caused and the revolution that has taken place over the last 2,000 years, it came from this moment, that after he was crucified, his blood, all the scriptures from then on it deals with the blood would not be there had not Jesus done this. Amen. What he went through set us up to be healed, to be delivered, to be saved, everything about it. First John 1, 5 tells us this. This is the message we've heard from him and declare to you God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we're lying and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the, look at it, and the what? Blood, say it again, the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his Word has no place in our lives. Father, I thank you that your word has found a place in our lives in such a way that it gives forth fruit. I thank you for the blood. I thank you for the the blessing, God, of knowing what you went through changed our lives forever. We love you in Jesus' name. And everybody shout. Amen. Amen. Everybody say the blood. blood. Woo, come on. Say it again. 
I love it. I love I love this. Amen. You may be seated. The blood is the only element in the body that reaches effects and fuels all other parts of the body. When the scripture talks about his blood being poured out, we understand it because we know we get cut, we bleed. Amen. This reddish liquid flows through our veins, pumped by our heart. There's something about knowing that your heart, your heart never stops. Once that thing started ticking inside the womb, I mean, that's where it started. Amen. Inside the womb. They can hear your heart beating inside the womb. Amen. And it never stops until you enter eternity. It just keeps right on going. You have taken your heart for granted. Oh, I know some of you started eating Cheerios now. You started looking after your health a little bit more. But the bottom line is we take our heart for granted. It never quits. You never just went down and say, heart, I want to thank you that you have always been pumping. Amen. You just stay at it. No matter how I've treated you, you've been good. And, that, and it's carrying physically, it's carrying oxygen and nutrients that are necessary to sustain life. If the blood is cut off from a certain member or a part of the body, it will change colors. We know that if you're out in the cold, I was out in the cold for a little while, and I the tips of my fingers started getting numb. And what happens is your body starts getting cold and your blood starts retreating back into your body to keep the internals warm. So the appendages they would call it uh what's the word uh, a, a deprivation it uh, uh, uh what happens when you lose them frostbite you get frostbite on tip of your nose always starts in the externals and starts moving inside because the blood is retreating now and what happens in our life amen when the blood is cut off from a certain member or a certain part of the body of Christ, amen, it changes colors. The cells will die, and it could be permanently dam damaged. It's internal deprivation. I've seen this among believers. Amen. Certain people in the church uh, that are saved, love God, amen, taking communion before, and all of a sudden they start um, uh, retreating. I think the word is backsliding, falling away. Uh, just giving up on God. Amen. And when they start doing that, they start losing their color. Amen. They start turning blue. You don't want to be blue. You want to be red. <laughs> okay. I just thought I'd throw that out there. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So uh, Romans 12, 4 says, Just as each of us has one body and, one, and many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. Now, there's the body of the little country church. And there's the body globally around. So there's local and global. But either way, the body's important. David Forsythe, it's good to have you here, sir. All the way from Colorado. Former member of the body of Christ here. Amen. Now he's out in Colorado. The blood delivers food throughout the body. Do you know your, your blood is carrying everything you eat? Everything you eat, it's running the turkey around, amen, and the gravy around, and the cranberry sauce around. It runs it. The blood also functions as a paramedic. Your blood, it's white blood cells like a militia stand ready to attack bacteria or foreign cells. Warfare, we don't even know what's going on. Your body right now is fighting off all kind of stuff, and you don't even realize it. And the blood of Jesus is fighting off stuff around you right now, and you don't even realize it. Amen. That's why the blood is so important that we took communion by faith this morning, believing in the blood of Christ and how it's going to change and turn our lives around. The blood shows proof of sonship. When they, when they take your blood, they can tell what type. You know, you're, you're O negative or do you know what my blood type is? You'd know it. B positive. Amen. It's amazing how blood type affects your attitude. Hey, hallelujah. Can I get an amen? Amen. It's just what it is. Amen. So, so the blood tells me who my brothers and sisters are. So when I partake of the blood, all of a sudden I found out that you're my brother and you're my sister. Amen. And not only in this body, but in other parts of the world. I got brothers and sisters I haven't met yet. Amen. So had it not been for the blood, I wouldn't know healing. Had it not been for the blood, I wouldn't have met my family. And spiritually, we need the blood. At salvation, we by faith apply. This word faith came all over me this week because I realized that I can't make you believe. I can't, uh, I can't spell it out enough for you. You have to have by faith knowing that this is not it, it's not the end, that there is an eternity. And we got to learn to think eternal and believe that there's something greater than all of this that we're dealing with. And I love this, but I believe that that's coming is going to be even better. Can I get an amen? So by faith, I've got to believe that. So at salvation, we apply Calvary's blood to our past and sanctification every day. Everyday life, we need the blood to bring heaven's energy or oxygen. That's what blood does. It brings oxygen. 
amen, into your life to keep us in touch with the body for healing and fighting off disruptions. Hebrews 9, 14 tells us, How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death? Do you realize your conscience is always talking to you about what you've done? It always brings up your past, amen, and the wickedness and the, the things you've thought. And maybe you didn't do them or maybe you thought them and you did them. You, you fight that with the blood. The blood stands there to cleanse our conscience from the acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. I can't serve God if I'm always condemning myself. And I'm always looking back and going, well, you know what you did, Jerry. You know how you've acted. You remember being a teenager and all the things you pulled off, boy? Amen. I remember it. God remembers. Thank God there were no cell phones then. Amen. So others don't remember that. But the bottom line is it affects your conscience. But the blood, the blood washes over my conscience and says, you're clean now, man. Did you know that you took communion a while ago? That means everybody that took communion by faith is going to heaven. You ought to give God a praise for that right now. The Message Bible says it like this. Think how much more the blood of Christ cleans up our whole lives. Inside and out, through the Spirit, Christ offered himself as an unblemished sacrifice, freeing us from all those dead-end efforts to make ourselves respectable so that we can live all, uh, live all out for God. So the law, when I think about the law, when I say the law, I'm talking about like the Ten Commandments, the law you see in Leviticus, the law you walk through in the Old Testament. The law brought us awareness of our need. The law told us that we were sinners. But it didn't give us a solution till Jesus came. There's power in the blood of Christ. 1 Peter 1.18 says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold. Isn't it funny the Bible calls silver and gold corruptible? And isn't it? People die over gold. They fight over silver. Amen. He said, these things are corruptible from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood. It's the blood that redeemed us. It's the blood that bought us back. We need the blood. You know, without the blood, my friend, all flesh dies. All flesh dies. Red flesh, black flesh, white flesh, brown flesh, yellow flesh. Amen. All flesh dies without the blood. We all need the blood. Can I get an Amen. My friend, the disease is sin. It separates us from God. The wages of that is death. The antidote. Oh, thank God for that. Oh, we're looking for, we're looking for a vaccine. A vaccine. I, are you as blown away as I am? That we have come up for a va vaccine for a virus that never really existed except in the animal world, I understand, uh, to humans until January this year or December of last year. And we've already got a vaccine for it. And we ain't got nothing that helps out to stop cancer, diabetes. Uh, how about just the regular flu? Amen. Yeah, you, you get a flu shot, but that don't mean you ain't going to get the flu. And we've already come up with a vaccine that I am suspicious of. You can take it if you want to. That's your call. Some of you won't have no choice, I know. Amen, because of where you work. But it just it blows my mind that we, we've already come up with... I've never seen a virus hijacked like this one has been. The world hijacked this thing and is using it as an agenda toward people. I just want to tell you how much I love, I'm glad, I don't like preachers that hijack sin and tell you all the time that you're a sinner, you're no good, amen, and point the finger and be condescending toward you. What if we did that with sin? I thank God I'm free from the power, amen, the penalty of sin. It no longer has a right over me. I have a confidence because of the blood that no matter what my past has been like, God's forgiven me. Can I get an amen? Exodus chapter 12 says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague... The plague, the plague shall not be on you. I'm reading this and I'm thinking, God, now again, I think you will. There were people that I've already known that have gone through the virus and they've gone through it. Everybody say through it. God didn't say, I'm going to keep you from it. I'm going to keep you through it. But in this case right here, see, he said, when I see the blood, I'm going to, I'm going to pass over you. And I reread this and I realized that it, the scripture says, first they took a lamb and they baked it with some bitter stuff. How many know that there's some bitter that goes with serving God? <sighs> But it says when you eat of the lamb, eat a little bit of the bitter. 
and a whole lot of the lamb. What I found in life is a lot of people eat a whole lot of bitter. <laughs> And a little bit of lamb. They get a little bit of lamb on Sunday, but they're eating bitter on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Hallelujah. You got to flip that thing and eat a whole lot of lamb. Hallelujah. Eat them lamb chops. Hallelujah. Eat, eat and, and enjoy just a little bit of the bitter. I like that. I like, you know, they, they, I'm not a big Chinese food eater, but they got that, uh, uh, that uh, hot mustard. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That yellow hot mustard? Oh, first time I got hold of that, I thought it was just like yellow French mustard. And I spread that all over there. I hit that. Ah, it about killed me. I learned. I learned if you're going to eat it, you got to eat a little bit of that hot mustard with a whole lot of, of uh, uh, General Chow's chicken. That's the only way to eat that little bit. It's the same way in the gospel. If life is going to throw bitter at you. Eat a little bit of bitter. You're going to take some bitter in. It's going to come in. But that lamb takes care of everything. And then he said, if you got too much lamb, share it with other families. I love that. You have to read it there in the book of Exodus. He said, if you got, you know, if another family don't have enough lamb, make sure you give them enough. So in other words, we're dependent on each other in this thing. Amen. If one house ain't got it, the other one does. Take that black jacket. Give it to Jody for me right there if you do that. I don't mind her being cold as long as I'm comfortable. I apologize. That was a little selfish of me. But I see her over there shivering. You're welcome. Amen. We're full service church. The blood, the blood brings peace. Look at this. Amen. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Amen. God made peace with, be honest with you, there was a problem between the Father and, and his children. And when Jesus died on the cross, he brought peace. I, I thank God for people who want to reconcile and reconnect, and that's what Jesus did for us. The blood gives pardon, Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood. Again, all of this would not have been possible had Jesus not died on the cross. His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The blood brings victory. Amen. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. Amen. Tells us, and they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb. And what's the rest of that verse? And the word of their testimony. Amen. They overcame, amen, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. The Scripture tells us about paradise. Revelation 7, 13. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white. How do you wash white and red and get white? But it says here, they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The, the blood has cleansing power. Amen. Turns things back white again. Amen. Takes away the stain, if you would. It's the greatness of God's goodness that does this for us. Amen. Joseph, as you move on up here, Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Is this not? What just happened in the book of Exodus when the death angel passed over and whoever was in that house and they said, you know, I, I literally, I've, I've had this terrible life. My past has been this way. I've been full of deceit and murder and lust and this and that and the other. And yet the death angel passed over when he saw the blood and you realized how much God loved you when you were a sinner. See, this verse, I quote it often because it means so much to me. God demonstrated. When Jesus died on the cross, he was demonstrating. He became a catalyst. Amen. His own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let me speak to you, mom, dad, grandpa, grandma, those of you that have siblings or you've been a, a, uh, a guardian of someone. And you just got love for them. And they keep doing wrong and they mess up. And it doesn't matter because you just got love for them. I got to ask you, where did that love come from? Mama, where did that love come from? Did not God put that love inside of us? For God is love. Since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through Him? I reread while I was on the plane. Jesus talking. And He laid out some stuff. And I said, God, I, 
I'm reading your words and they, they, they're hard. You know, you're telling us that, that you, there's one scripture that talked about he knew where this tower fell and killed eight Galileans. He knew about it. And he said, don't be so concerned about that, but be concerned about one who could put your body and soul into hell. And I think, God, you, in other words, death to you is just transition. It's just out of here. You know, I had a good friend pass away two days ago, Sam. We all knew him. He'd been in his church. Aaron Wilburn had, had the virus, and he had a heart attack, and he's 70 years old, and he passed. What a great guy. But I think about this, and I think about all, and I know that your husband passed away this week. Amen. And I think about how much we love people here, but there's got to be a there. There's got to be a place that I'm going to see them again. There's got to be a, a comfort for my mother who loved her daughter and her husband so much that she's waiting here on this earth for the day that God calls her home. There's got to be more than this. There has to be. But I, and I'm not trying to preach you into death. I'm just telling you this, that God demonstrated his love for us that while we were sinners, he's he like a daddy. He just keeps on loving us. He loved us when we did wrong. Doesn't that make you want to love Him? Doesn't that make you want to press in? Say, God, I love you. So accepting the rejected is not the weakness of the gospel. It's the strength of the gospel. It's, it's the misfits. I had a great opportunity this week. When, I, when I'm away from here, I'm still Jerry. And I go into places and I share the gospel. Amen. I talk... To every, just everybody I meet, I, I just got to talk to them. I mean, if you got a hot rod, I'm going to walk up to you. And I'm going to talk to you. And I'll look at them and I say, you know what? Our church, we have Muscle Car Sunday. And they say, what? I saw a guy with a $40,000 engine and a $2,000 car. <laughs> Honest to God. Amen. I, saw, I said, man, you're showing off now. But I got to witness to him. Amen. And I just, I just can't help myself. Because while I was a sinner, God loved me and he died for me. And when you've been forgiven much, you love much. And you start understanding this, the power in the blood. So I stand by faith, believe in God for the future. And, and I, I've had flashbacks. I've had relapses. Your pastor needs intensive care at times. There are times depression tries to roll over me. There's times I hear a voice say, what you've preached for 30-something years is a lie. Amen. And I, I, I fight that thing. And I go back to the book, which never changes. One of my problems with science today is it's always changing. One of my problems with this virus is the narrative is always changing. Uh, the, I, a lady, I know a lady in our church, North Campus, she, she sent me a paper. Pastor, I got the virus. I want you to know I'm staying home. She called her this week. How you doing? She said, I got chills. Couldn't taste or smell. But I'm all right now. Why would they close the world down over this? I'm not answering that question. She said, but by faith, I'm standing and believing God. Amen. You can't give in to what you're hearing on TV. You can't give in by what you're seeing our governors and judges and others do. My goodness, we didn't vote them in to tell us how to run our lives. Oh, you did? No, I didn't. I voted you in to take care of the police and the fire department and fill potholes. I mean, that's why I voted you in. Hey, Amen. So quit trying to tell me how to. I got to keep living. I got to keep pressing. I got to keep believing. Transparency is so needed. What if a hospital advertised most of our doctors at one time or another have been patients? And many of them are still in treatment. Would you go to that doctor? Oh, come on now. And still we say come. I'm telling you about me. I stand under the blood. I love the blood. Had it not been for the blood, I wouldn't know who my family is. I wouldn't know healing. I wouldn't know there's a heaven. Had it not been for the blood, my life would be so much different. I thank you for the blood. We're saved by the blood plus nothing. Amen. By faith in Him. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Those watching online. I say to you again, I hope you took communion with us this morning. I hope you realize that this common union changes everything. We are family. We are family. It wasn't a football team that made us family. It wasn't a political statement that made us family. It wasn't being 
born in Texas made us family or moving to Texas that made us family. Amen. What made us family is the blood of Jesus. Amen. Changed our lives. Effect, became the catalyst that affects everything that we go through. God, I thank you for the blood. I thank you for my family. I thank you that we're born again. And we got a heaven to look forward to. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, yeah, give God your best praise. Come on, give Him your praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm healed. I'm saved. I'm delivered. By faith, believe in God for that. Amen. Amen. Stand on the blood. When that, listen, if the devil would come to me and tell me that I ain't saved, and I'm not trying to lift myself up, how much more is he trying to mess with you? He's always messing with us. Amen. I stand on the word. Thank God for the word. What can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. I just have two announcements I need to make, so I'll just go ahead and make them, David. You see in front of you, they're tithing offering envelopes. And by the way, had it not been for you guys that give online, I don't know if we'd be able to keep the lights on. Amen. I appreciate those that are learning to give on their phones and online. But also, if you, if you give but through check or whatever, amen, make sure. You, and keep giving. Don't stop your giving. Amen. I, I promise you, there's something about living through this book and believing through this book. If God would give his only son, he set a precedent for us to be givers. Amen. And if, you, if you're not a giver, all you are is a taker. So you've got to learn to be a giver. To, to let, so God, I'm going to start. I'm going to start giving. I'm going to start believing you for the best. Amen. So if there's envelopes in front of you, amen, I want to see you reach for and get an envelope. If you give them by phone, throw your phone up in the air. Let me see you. Amen. Let me see that phone. Thank you. All right. Now we're learning. We're learning through the phone. Amen. I hadn't learned to do that yet. Now, Can we pray for my pastor? This is my pastor. I spoke with him. He sent me a message. He's, uh, he's sick. He does not have the virus. He got checked. All right, because you know, everybody got to get checked. You can't just have a flu no more. You can't have the sniffles. Hey, Amen. You got to go pay money to get checked. So he's sick. And he said, Pastor, I, I, I can't even preach in my own church today. He said, so I won't be able to be there this week. He said, forgive me. Of course, there's nothing to forgive. Amen. I'll wait until you can get here. But we're still going to do a fellowship because we just come out of communion here. So let's have communion on Tuesday and Wednesday night. Amen. Uh, I have a special speaker that's going to be here Wednesday night. I'll let you know more about him later. Amen. And I'll also be speaking. So we've got to tag team. But then it won't be a long service because I want you to. How many say, Pastor, I'll bring some soup or I'll bring some stew or I'll bring some dumplings. Let me see some hands. I want to make sure we've got enough to eat. Amen. Okay, there's quite a few hands there. So, your desserts. Dear God, I, you can't just keep doing that, Valerie. Okay, if you want to bring some desserts, you can bring some desserts. But I'm going to tell you, I, I came back hurting from this trip and Thanksgiving. I said, Lord Jesus, I, got, I, I, I lost some weight, but I know I can find it again real quick, Ken, if I ain't careful. Amen. And it's through these holidays. Hallelujah. So bring something right after service. We'll be eating together uh, Tuesday night. Services start here by 7.30. Amen. We'll be eating by 8.30 and out of here by 9 o'clock unless you eat dessert. Amen. And the other thing is stable in the saddle. If you've not taken it or if you'd like to take this course again, there's no cost to it. It's a great opportunity for us to get together. Dwayne, I'm looking forward to getting together. I'm looking forward to talking and, amen, answering questions and all those things. So please sign up for December the 12th. It'll start at 8.30 in New Caney. Amen. And it go through about noon, noonish, and then we'll eat together. We'll have lunch together. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, to our guest. Shannon, thanks for coming today. It was good to have you. Thank you, Jesus. David, why don't you come up here and make the proclamation. Amen. To see us out of here. Listen, when you proclaim this, believe this. Believe for benefits. Amen. And let me, let me just say this to uh, churches. And uh, David had sent me a, uh, a, um, a video, and I was watching, and I thought, I, good, I know why I did it, because it confirmed what we're doing. There are about a half a million churches in America. A lot of them 
I, I think they're supposed to be like 20, 25 percent are struggling right now, could actually shut down. That's a lot of churches. One of the reasons why is a lot of times a business, a church, an individual will live a life in a process. In other words, we know what we're going to do in January. Let's take our church. We normally would have February a Valentine banquet. Then we would get ready for a spring conference. And then we would have Muscle Car Sunday. And then we'd have the summer camps. And then we would, we would have a, a conference in here in, uh, by October uh, back at the other campus. You know, and we would do the Hobo Saturday. Pretty processed, right? You pretty much knew it was coming. Then this hit. And one of the things that we had to do, and, and the, the term in the uh, uh, secular world is pivot. To pivot, to, to turn. I've always used the term audible, call an audible. Some churches have not been able to do that because they are board ran. In other words, they got to get with the board and ask the board, what do we do concerning this right here? They got to have committee meetings and yada, yada, yada. There has been enough freedom in my life uh, with people in, in our board. They said, Pastor, what do you think we should do? And what we've done is we've pivoted. We, we worked with it. We, we went to seven weeks of uh, drive-in services. Amen. We said, we moved Muscle Car Sunday. We didn't cancel it. We, 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 we moved it forward to September. We pivoted. We moved with it. As this thing goes on, pay attention because you're a great church. You didn't go, oh, no. No, if we don't do it this way, we're leaving. Amen. If we don't have Muscle Car Sunday in April, we ain't saying, if we don't have Hobo Saturday, we say, uh-uh. There are times in life you've got to pivot. And here's what's happened with a lot of individuals. You've gone through businesses, and your business didn't pivot, and it shut down. This is a great time. Listen, the money has never left the planet. It never left it. It just changed hands. It went over. Uh, the medical made a lot of money. The government made a lot of money. A lot of folk made a lot of money through this. It ain't changed hands. Amen. So you've got to figure out, okay, God, where do I pivot to next? No, I don't want to just stay locked down or incarcerated. I want to pivot into the next place you got for me. It, it, there's got to be an opportunity here. Can I get an amen? And as a church, thank God for an opportunity to pivot, to make a move and say, you know what? We're going to keep right on moving. If we've got, we got, got to postpone this or cancel this, we'll do it. But we're going to keep right on moving forward. Amen. And stay as consistent as we can in serving Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll see you Tuesday night. Amen. Excited about, yeah. Excited about, there's one thing, like I've always told Pastor, one thing I like about serving this church and serving with Pastor is, is the fact that he's not run by a board. He's not run by a group of people trying to tell him what he's allowed to say, what he can't say, what he can say. And instead, he allows the Holy Spirit to direct that. And that's so important in the church today that we're not run by people and even in your own lives, listen, don't just take what pastor says and do what he says. Do what he says because it's the Holy Spirit prompting that in you. When he speaks, it's not just him speaking his own words, but it's the very word of God. And then we take that, we process that, and we use that to make our decisions. And so I just pray that you guys understand that today. And we just walk that out. Like he said, we get ready for pivots. There's opportunities out there that we've never had before. The earth is, is presented opportunities to win people like never before. Why? Because in a hopeless society, when they see hope, it's like a giant beacon of light. And they're like flies to the <laughs> moths to the flame. They got to find it. And, and we can be that right now in this generation, in this time. Remember, God called you for such a time as this. Wherever you're at in your life, whatever part of life you're in, God called you for such a time as this. Today we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates in return, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. Lord, I thank you for every gift and giver in this house. I pray that you would just bless them, overflow them, and continue, Lord, to process them so that they can make moves according to what 
what you would have them to do, that their ears would be more open now than ever before, that they would know exactly what to do. Like the sons of Issachar, they knew the times and the seasons. Lord, I'm praying that we're a church that understands the times and the seasons, that we would make decisions based on those, not based on what the news is telling us, but based on what the Holy Spirit is leading us to do. I thank you, Lord, for everybody in this house and everybody online. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.